Good afternoon everybody and welcome to this week's Tillers Turf Talk. I hope you're all keeping really, really well. Well, the recent rainfall coupled with the warm temperatures and the sunshine can only mean one thing at Tillers and that is growth. So the grass is growing really vigorously now. We've got mowers out. So not only is it a great time to get on top of things and really get things moving on, but also it's a great time to have some demonstrations. Now last week we saw the big wide area mower, the 16.2 metre Vimo. And this week we'll have a look at another mower, but a slightly smaller one. So this week we're going to be taking a look at autonomous mowing, and more specifically the Husqvarna Siora 546 EPOS. And it's doing a great job for us in this field. So what we're going to do today, take a closer look at it, talk about some of the advantages it may have in commercial turf production, and just see how the whole thing works in general. So sit back, enjoy the video, let's watch some mowing. Now I'm not going to get too technical with this autonomous mower because I don't quite have the technical brain or the knowledge of this particular machine sort of deep down. But what I'm going to do today is talk about a few of the features of it and how things have really evolved in terms of the autonomous world. Now Husqvarna have been doing these sort of robot mowers, shall we call them, for a long, long time now. So, you know, principally they're the same, but the technology has changed massively since the old days. So yeah, so when you look back, when they first came out, most of them were used in gardens, and people would have to put a wire loop underground all the way around to create a boundary. Nowadays, of course, it all comes from above, all GPS, and we'll go over and have a look at that system shortly. So yeah, it's following me here. So what are the advantages in turf production? Well. We've got a mower here that's going to go 24-7. We've got peace and quiet. I've got the mower right next to me here now. It's not interfering with my filming at all. And I think what it does as much as anything, it keeps any heavyweight tractors, any heavyweight machinery off the field. So it's light, it's compact. It's not causing any kind of wheel damage or turning damage whatsoever. And overall, it's doing a fantastic job. So this is, I think, two thirds of the way across this field now, and shortly it'll be heading off back to the docking station for a recharge, a bit of a refuel, and uh, then head straight back out again and continue going long into the night and into tomorrow morning, and whenever we want to keep it going. Now these can be fitted, I believe, with rain sensors. So if you want it not to mow in the rain, it'll sense the rain, it'll stop. And equally on the app, which again we'll look at shortly, you can go on there and you can also stop it manually you can adjust the height of cut and yeah pretty much operate the whole thing really off your phone amazing so while the mower goes merrily on its way to the end of the field ready to turn and come back again I'm going to talk a little bit about the cutting mechanism on there. So there are three individual discs, each one has five almost like razor blade knives on and therefore you get a real sharp, good, crisp cut. I'll just turn the camera around, you'll see the quality of cut. So here we go, beautifully uniform and because it's going over it regular, you know, we're not creating an uncontrollable amount of clippings and once the mower goes over each time it gently disperses them into the sward and they're doing no harm whatsoever. So it does a fantastic job with the mowing. This current set of blades, I believe, is on 1,800 hours worth of work. So a very cost effective, very economical way of mowing things. So as, an, as a nation now, we've become heavily dependent on technology and GPS. You know, Rory's going out on his big mower there. He'll be GPSed up, mapped out on the field. And these mowers are no different. So with this one, if we look just up there, you should be able to see 
on top of the pole there is a, I don't know what you call it, like a data collection device or satellite connection. So signals are being sent from above down to here, then back out to the mower there to tell it where it needs to be, where it's going. And it is so good that I believe the tolerance is less than one centimetre in terms of its accuracy, which is absolutely incredible when you consider we've got a mower that at times is, I don't know, could be 800 metres away. So it's absolutely fabulous. And then down here, we have the docking station. So when the power percentage gets out of a certain level, it will send a signal out to the machine to come back to base, to come and dock, charge up, ready to go again. Fabulous. So another question that might get asked is autonomy and GPS, is it really the future of wide area mowing? Well in many ways it already is, you know it's already widespread use out there, uh, particularly out on golf courses for mowing roofs and even fairways now, uh, going autonomously so when the greenkeeper gets there at 6 o'clock in the morning, 20% of his work's already been done for him through the night, so what is there not to like about that? And also these are very good on driving, golf driving ranges, I believe it can be fitted with sort of a, a snow plough mechanism. So it pushes the balls, disperses them to the side, so nothing gets chopped up by the mower. So it all happens now, and as you can see, maybe some lines across the field. This can be programmed to mow in lots and lots of different directions. But also one really cool feature on it is when it comes back and tracks back to the docking station, it will do so taking a different route each time, so you don't get a consistent wheel marking and potential wheel damage heading back to the charger every time. So it's got all the features, even when it comes back from the charger, again it takes a different route back out of the field to spread any kind of wear, not that there really is any, but yeah, what can I say about this? It's doing a fantastic job, doing a great cut, doing exactly what I want it to do. So as we mentioned technology earlier, is there really anything that we can't do with these things these days? Well the Husqvarna is no exception, I have to turn the camera around, I'll show you some of the features on the app. So this gives us lots of information, so if I just zoom in a little bit there. So at the moment its status is mowing, so that tells us it's out there doing its job. Nice picture of the mower itself, which is a great feature. And what this is telling us now is the height of cut there, which is currently at 30 mil. We've got the field number there so we know what field it's in, in the middle. And then it's telling it's on 20% battery, so it'll be coming into charge fairly soon and we'll be there to see it when it docks up. So yeah, lots of other information on here I'm sure. And we can flick on there. And this gives us the outline of the field we're currently mowing and it tells exactly where the mower is in relation to the field. So if you want to do a walk out, visual checkup, it's probably worth waiting five minutes for it to get back to this end to its closest point. So. As with all these apps and everything else these days, they give us all the information we want. You know, technology really has moved forward now, like I say, particularly with autonomous mowing. You know, I'm sure you can still get wired system, but this is totally wireless. It, the field's mapped out in the, initially in the beginning, like I say, all programmed onto the app. And yeah, everything's controlled from here. So if you want to drop or raise the height of cut, I can do that with this phone from the office. Absolutely fantastic, crazy world. Um, we'll go and watch it dock up and then it'll recharge itself and it'll be repeat all over again.
really hope you enjoyed watching this week's Turf Talk and learned a bit more about the Husqvarna Siora 546 EPOS um, autonomous mower here. Um, I have to say, really impressed with what it's doing. Like I say, technology so advanced from where it used to be. It really is chalk and cheese. So Husqvarna have been doing this a long time now. They know what they're doing with this machine. Um, they're making an already good machine even better. So hats off to them and credit to them. Um, like I say, it is on trial at the moment for us and we'll be doing all the maths on it and working out you know, all the sums and as to whether it can be a cost saving to us. Uh, but more importantly, is it going to produce a better crop? And certainly during wetter, more challenging conditions, I think this mower really could be worth its weight in gold. So like I say, widespread use all over at the moment, you know, stately homes, you know, smaller versions in gardens and, you know, it's been a fantastic machine. So I really hope you've enjoyed the last two weeks seeing the widest mower against the narrowest. And hopefully we've learnt a bit about both machines and yeah, where can we go from there? Who knows? But like I say, technology now, absolutely off the scale. So thank you as always for watching. Uh, please continue to like, to share, uh, subscribe to Tillers Turf TV on YouTube if you haven't already. Um, it's free of charge and we'll alert you to our weekly vlogs. If you want to see more on the Vimo, then have a look at last week's if you're new to the channel and learn a bit more about the wide area mower um, on there. But in the meantime, a fabulous weekend. Take care, everybody. Cheers for now. See you next week. Thank you.